everybody. Welcome to Depot TV. I am your host for tonight, Sherry Jackson, Executive Director of the Depot. We're glad you chose to spend an hour with us. We kind of like these fun hours that we're putting together here for Depot TV, and tonight is no different. We have with us tonight, Terry Ware. If you don't know Terry, well, you get to know him a little bit tonight. I got a chance to sit down with him, and you're going to hear some of his music. And he'll be back around in coming weeks telling us a few more tales. Uh, I also have a get to know you get to know your neighbor segment with the executive director of the Norman Film Fest, Andy Coulter. He is an amazing human being who's made an extraordinary impact on Norman. As I found out in just the short five years he's been here, some people you feel like you've known him forever. We also have the art, whimsical, fabulous art now represented by the Pop Gallery in Santa Fe and on the walls of the depot right now of Don Schooler, who is also the chair of our board. You guys have to come see the show Lighthearted at the depot. We are so thrilled to be putting together this thing that is whimsical and beautiful and gorgeous. Uh, and you should come by and see it Thursday through Saturday from 10 to 2. But we'll talk to Don about his art and see his monkeys. Uh, and we're also going to have a poem by Jennifer Kidney. So without further ado, kids, here we go. Depot TV. This is the first song I ever co-wrote with Ray Wiley Hubbard. It's called Billy of Texas. <laughs> Running across the belly of Texas on a bit of February night. Looking at the towns and the clowns and the frowns and the mounds for the people who would die. I love my life like I love my state. It's hard and it's fast and it's dry. Running across the belly of Texas on a bit of February night. Janie's at the wheel. She just hit third, coming on the I 35. My truck's running good with my house of wood. My friends laying low inside. Some are grinning, some are sinning. Everyone is wild with a laugh. I'm just drinking in paranoia, thinking, please don't crash with the stash. Running across the belly of Texas. On a bit of February night Looking at the towns and the clouds and the frowns The mounds for the people who have died Well, I love my life like I love my state It's hard and it's fast and it's dry Running across the belly of Texas On a bitter February night in a Santa Fe cafe, Buffalo and Chick to be exact. We had some good times, we drank some bad wines, we used to sing last week get Shack. I was just thinking about that right now, how that I'll never be rich. Bus playing lead in a funky country band, Chick still digging in a ditch. Run across the belly of Texas on a bitter February night. Looking at the towns and the clowns and the frowns, the mouths for the people who have died. I love my life like I love my state. It's hard and it's fast and it's dry. Running across the belly of Texas on a bitter February night. The Beatles were a huge influence on me, uh, actually the biggest influence on me. Uh, and my favorite Beatle is George, so I'm going to do one of his songs. You don't realize how much I need you. Love you all the time and never leave you. Please. 
please come on back to me I'm lonely as can be I need you Said you had a thing or two to tell me How was I to know you would upset me You told me you don't want my loving anymore. That's when it hurt me. A feeling like this, I just can't go on anymore. Please remember how I feel about you. I can never really live without you. Come on back and see Just what you mean to me I need you But when you told me You don't want my loving anymore That's when it hurt me And feeling like this I just can't go on anymore How I feel about you I could never really live without you So come on back and see Just what you mean to me Hi guys, it's me, Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV and space and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. Everybody, welcome to Depot TV. And today, our musical guest is Terry Buffalo Ware, uh, and we are thrilled and excited to have him here with us. He is a a legend here in Norman for all of his travels, tales, and musical journeys. And we're thrilled to have him be a part of Depot TV. Welcome, Terry. Thank you, Sherry. It's good to see you. I'm so happy to see you too. someday soon in person, friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'll start with, have you had your shots? Yeah, uh, my wife Jeannie and I both 
got our second uh, vaccine dose a little over five weeks ago. Yes, you are a fully vaccinated creature. Yes, there are That's advantages to age. What? There are advantages. There are advantages. Uh, have you Have you been out? Um, really haven't changed our routine uh, at all to speak of, uh, except that yesterday my mother, my 90 year old mother, who she is uh, three weeks now past her second dose. Yeah. And we went to visit her and like this, no masks. That's so exciting. And felt really good to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to feel really good to start to get to see people again. Um, well, you're here today because we're going to be uh, listening to some of your music on this episode and future episodes. And I, I wanted to let people have an opportunity to get to know you and all of the things that you've done. And we're going to do uh, some more storytelling with you. But today, just wanted to say uh, or let you tell us a little bit about how how you became a musician, where that came into your life. I know we've talked about it before, but I want to hear it again. Okay. Well, my very first mi musical memory is uh, my family lived in Gage, Oklahoma, which is in far northwest Oklahoma. Yeah, I know Gage. And uh, <clears throat> we had our, our close family friends that lived there. Mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman, that, uh, this gentleman and his wife and their daughter, uh, the gentleman, his name was George Williams. And he worked for the FAA, uh, mm -hmm. and he was a musician. Uh, and before they had lived in Gage, they had lived in Big Spring, Texas. And George played pedal steel guitar with Hoyle yeah. Nix, uh, Western Swing Band. And uh, anyway, they had a piano at their house. And I can remember whenever I was uh, maybe five years mm -hmm. old, him showing me how to play a song on the piano. Uh, and, and I remember the song too. Uh, it was this old house, <laughs> and he nice. showed me how he showed me how to play a real simple version of that. Mm -hmm. And every time I was over at their house, I'd just go bang on their piano. And then we moved to Woodward, uh, and and after we moved to Woodward, and I asked for piano lessons. I wanted them, and yeah. my my parents got a piano. And at age nine, I started piano lessons. And then when I was uh, 14, the, the Christmas that I was 14 uh, years old, my parents uh, bought me a guitar for Christmas. Nice. And in February of that year, I'd seen the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. And that was, uh, as I tell people, that was my lightning bolt moment. It was just earth shaking. Mm. And I just like, I wanted, and so I pestered him, I pestered him. And then I finally got a guitar later that year and uh, self-taught. And then I, uh, in high school, I had a rock and roll band in high school and played all over that area. There were lots of teen hops, school dances, things like that. And we traveled uh, all over Western Oklahoma and wow. even, into, even into the panhandle of Texas and up into Kansas a few times because all these towns had teen hops and teen clubs and VFW halls and American Legion halls that where this kind of thing went on. That's where I really yes. cut my teeth. And then also going to see bands that would come through uh, Woodward to play. And I would always hang around. I'd go see them whenever they came and hang around and go pester them. And I learned a lot that way. Then I came to, whenever I came to Norman, uh, uh, a couple of the guys that were in the high school band with me, were in a, we were in a band here, eventually just one of them. And I played, you know, basically worked my way through college playing uh, around Norman, Oklahoma City. Uh, awesome. Uh, bars. Uh, there was a place on campus corner called Renaissance Fair, which is where uh, Combs is now or was. That it's been right. brothers that space there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. And that was a place called Renaissance fair. And that was, uh, I played there a lot and then it eventually became a place called the bar, uh, played there a lot. And then it became Fontanelli's. <laughs> yes. And went through that, uh, little process there. 
And uh, then after college, uh, my last semester of college, a friend of mine that I knew from Woodward had been living in Red River, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And he came to visit me about maybe a couple of weeks or so before school was out. And uh, I said, what are you going to do whenever you graduate? And I said, I, I really don't know. And he goes, well, why, don't you, why don't you move to Red River? He says, there's a lot of music going on there. Uh, and I'm living rent free in a cabin up in a canyon. Nice. And, you know, it's got a spare bed. And I, I said, well, that sounds good to me. Well, the year before that, I, the band I was in here in Norman, there was a booking agent that booked uh, rock and roll bands to play in Red River at the skating rink. So I'd actually been there once and played the skating rink. And when I was, we were playing there on uh, our night off, we went to see a group called Three Faces West who had a coffee shop uh, in Red River where tourists would go and they gave these shows and they were really good. And Ray Wiley Hubbard was in that the folk group. He was just Ray Hubbard then. He had, hadn't started using three names yet. Hmm. And then and Ray had come to see us on their night off. And so that's the first time I'd met him. But whenever I moved out there, the first night I was in town, uh, we went to a place called the D-Bar D, uh, the guy that I was uh, rooming with. Went, and it's called the Mother Load now. It's still there. And Ray was in there having a little cocktail and uh, went up and reintroduced myself to him. And he said, well, we're having a jam session at the uh, outpost tonight. Watch come over. And so I did. And that was the first time I actually played with him was at this jam session that he and Bill and Bonnie Hearn were also there and a couple of other people. And, uh, it, you know, that was kind of another lightning bolt moment because I had I'd never been around like serious, you know, uh, or played with like serious songwriters like that before. Yeah. Uh, people that actually were. That's what they did for a living was play music. And so, you know, and from there, just, things just kind of snowball. Yeah. I, I love hearing that. You have great stories. Uh, and so before we talk about the stories that you're going to tell us, I have a question for you because this is one I haven't asked you and I want to know. You play tremendous surf rock. I absolutely love your surf rock. Was that always a part of the rep? Where did that come from in your work? Yeah, well, that came from, because uh, you, you know, I heard Dwayne Eddy. I really yeah. remember hearing Rebel Rouser on the radio whenever I was yep. growing up, and uh, and I loved it. And uh, uh, also the Ventures. And I, you, you'd hear Walk Don't Run on the radio. You'd hear Sleepwalk mm -hmm. on the radio, and I loved that kind of music. And uh, my parents were members of a, a record club. <laughs> And I and whenever they would they would buy mainly like classical and jazz records, and mm -hmm. I would always get to pick a record uh, to get every month, and I would get like Ventures, uh, and I also got like Floyd Kramer stuff like that. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> that I always really loved that, and uh, even uh, bought like a surf and piano book because I was playing. And for some, I don't know why. Even though I love that music, I don't know why it didn't occur to me to play guitar then, but it took the Beatles to do that. Huh. But, the, but the very first day, the Christmas day that I had my guitar, my very first guitar, uh, I sat down with it and I picked out Pipeline. That was the very first song that I taught myself on guitar. So, nice. So that goes back a long ways. And I still love that music. It's great music. I absolutely love the Ventures. I have a, I'm a vinyl collector and I have got about 25 Ventures albums that I just love. I love them all. Well, um, you only have about 175 right. more to go of theirs. That's right. They did quite a lot. 
Uh, yeah, and I, I I stopped at about 25 because I realized <laughs> I could quickly just outpace my bookshelf space if I collected too many more. Uh, these are great, and I want to tell everybody before we go that you tell the best stories. You have had such a storied career. Um, you've got to play in so many different countries with so many different artists. And so we've asked you here at Depot TV to maybe spend a little time telling us some of those stories that we get to share in future episodes. I look forward to that. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Uh, everybody, this is Terry Ware. Stay tuned. You'll hear some music from Terry Ware. And in future episodes, some more stories from the road from Terry's great career. Uh, thanks for being here with us, Terry. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sherry. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Can't wait to see you soon. Give you a big hug, friend. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Hi, guys. It's me, Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. everybody. Welcome to Depot TV. We love to talk to people from our community and all the wonderful things that they're doing. And today we have with us Andrew Coulter of the Norman Film Festival. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you for, so much for having me. So excited to have you on today. I just think you're a fabulous human being and I want to spend a couple of minutes letting our audience get to know you, if that's all right. Perfect. Not a big deal. Awesome. Well, let's talk about you. Um, first, this is a fun question I like to ask everybody. Are you a, are you a born and raised Normanite or a transplant Normanite? I'm a transplant. So I was born and raised in, um, a little bit of, of different places all around the U S a little bit as the Midwest. Um, so I was born in Colorado and then we lived in Wyoming, Nebraska, um, and then back in Colorado and then, um, moved to Oklahoma. And then, um, I went to Cameron, uh, Cameron university in Lawton after I was in high school, Colorado. Um, and then I moved to Norman after Lawton. So I've been here wow. about five years. Wow. Five years, five years. You've only been here five years. It seems like you've been here forever because of the <laughs> seamless way you have been able to integrate yourself into the Norman community and become a, an important part of who we are. Um, I first got to know you as the, uh, one of the organizers of the first pride parade here in town, yes. uh, that we were so happy to get to be headquarters for at the depot. Or, or like just your home base for a minute. Right. Uh, and uh, and tell us about all of the other things that you were involved in here in town. Um, so yeah, I started, We um, I worked with like, some friends and we got the Norman, um, Norman Pride going. Uh, mm -hmm. Before that, we started the drag shows here in Norman um, yes. at Louis Bar and Grill on Campus Corner. We did that for about a year. And then mm -hmm. we moved it down over to Bison's and did the drag shows there for about almost two years. And then um, COVID hit. 
and we went kind of virtual for a little while. Yeah. And then now we're started back up and we just had our last drag show at Red Brick Bar here in Norman. And wow. um, we're getting ready to branch out and start doing those again. Um, and then while I was doing the drag shows, I was reached over by Chase, who does, who used to be the executive director of the film festival, and mm -hmm. um, Chase Spivey. And um, he's like, hey, do you want to help me out with this? And I was like, yeah, I'll be more than happy to do that. So then I jumped on board and now I'm the executive director of the film festival and we're kind of branching out doing new things. And um, Chase is still on, is as now the president and I'm the executive director and we're kind of working together and making this kind of be the best year we've ever had, hopefully, and um, do things we've never done before. And um, that's why we're trying to do this um, drive-in movie night, uh, which is going to yes. be absolutely amazing. I think it's going to be a new kind of way that people can enjoy film while still being safe. I know people are still getting their shots. COVID is still a thing. So we want to do something that's kind of different, safe, and yet super fun and get people really involved. And that way they can right. see films that they don't normally get to see in like the movies or we have to rent them. So uh, we want to give people an opportunity to watch films for free. I love that. I love that so much. I'm a humongous fan of drive-ins. Uh, my significant other and I have, you know, it, it's kind of a, a bucket list thing for us to visit all of the existing drive-ins left in America. So the idea that right. you would be doing film festival or showing films as a drive-in just lights my fire. I think it's fantastic. So tell us about when this next event is coming up. So it's actually going to be March 26th at 730. Um, okay. It's kind of the, the time frame. Um, like most people know when you go to a drive-in, when the sun goes down, the movie hits the screen. So um, right. that's kind of the that's kind of the, the gist we're going with. Um, it's going to be at Central Library here in Norman. Um, it's a back parking lot. Um, you'll drive in through um, University, through the entrance of the parking lot there. And then uh, we'll get you to your spot where you're able to park and uh, watch the film. Um, we're asking you, you'll, it's all going to be over the, the radio. So you'll use your radio in your car to listen so to the cool. film. Um, so we have a, a transmitter for that. So we are able to make this happen, like actual drive-in. And then, um, yeah, we're going to show, um, it's the Hunt for the Wilder People is what the film's called. I think it's a super fun film for the family. I think everyone of all ages can really find something in the movie that they can see in themselves a little bit also, which is kind of interesting and a good takeaway. Um, yeah. And I think it's just an overall just funny film that I think people are going to love. I love that. And I think we have a trailer for that. So let's take a look. Let's watch the trailer for the film. Perfect. Ricky Baker. He is a baddie. A youth court regular. But we're hoping that this change of scene will help straighten them out. You hungry? That's a silly question, isn't it? Look at you. <laughs> Ricky Baker, now you are 13 years old. You are a teenager and you're as good as gold. Ricky, this is heck. You can call him uncle if you like. No, I can't. Lola told me to tell you that you should give me something to do. Is there anything you want me to do? Yeah. Leave me alone. Cool. You ever been up in that jungle before? There's about a million hectares of it, buddy. It's easy to get lost. You lost? Oh. I'm amazed how lost you got. You little bastard! We got no choice but to camp out here for a few weeks. Where are you, Ricky Baker? More on this massive national manhunt. Faulkner is cork Asian. Well, they got that wrong because you're obviously white. You're going to jail, you pervert. What you call me? Yeah. Back up, homies, and let go of my uncle! So what do we do now? We run. No, we don't need to run. Huh? Oh, yeah, this is fast walk. Gonna be rough. No huts, no tents, real bush life. And if you play up, I dump you. OK, uncle. I'd still prefer if you don't call me uncle. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? What's the fastest way out of here? Jetpack! Do you actually have a jetpack? No! What? We're offering $10,000 to anyone who can capture them, dead or alive. Oh. Alive. They should be alive. Crumpy! Oh, no, she's a bit bumpy around here. Oh, you, Ricky. Ricky! Ricky! Ah! Isn't that Alex who did this? Tell them I was the world of people. 
The what's up, people? I'll never stop running. Yeah, and I'll never stop chasing you. I'm relentless. I'm like the Terminator. I'm more like Terminator than you. I said at first you're more like Sarah Connor in, in the first movie, too, before she could do chin-ups. <laughs> I absolutely love that. That looks wonderful. I love Sam Neill and everything he's been in. Yes. And I love the down under sense of humor. It's just so quirky and human and strange. Yeah, we're really excited for this to be our first film that we're showing. And then hopefully just to, to kick off and a branch off exactly where we're going to go and um, keep giving people something different and something unique to watch especially for our families to come out together. I think it's the perfect film for to, to kick everything off with. I, I love it. It looks fantastic. I hope everybody joins in again. This is going to be at the Central Library in Norman on March the 26th, starting at 7.30, probably not the film at 7.30, but film at sundown, right. uh, as everybody knows <laughs> how the drive-in goes. Yep. And where do people get tickets? Or do so they there need? actually is no ticket. Um, so you can go follow us on Facebook and um we have all the events right online. Um, it's okay. the Norman Film Fest, and um, there's a an event on there for the actual film itself. And then we're going to keep updating that as we go along. And if we have other events that in the future or different drive-in movie nights or trivia nights or whatever we decide to do next, that'll all be published right on there. Beautiful. That sounds lovely. Thank you so much for being here. I love the Norman Film Fest. I love uh, what you guys are doing and how creative you're being. And I appreciate you so much, Andrew, as a, one of the uh, fabulous, wonderful weirdos in our community. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. We will talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thanks again, Sherry. Thanks to everyone at the depot. Okay. Bye. Hi, guys. It's me, Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV in space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. Everybody, we are here with Don Schooler. Hi, Don. How are you doing today? Hi, Sherry. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, for full disclosure, Don, I'm going to let everybody know that Don, besides being a pretty fantastic artist, is currently the chair of the Depot Board of Directors. He is also the chair of our gallery committee. Yeah, yeah. I get to wear lots of hats and get to work with a lot of wonderfully talented, nice people. Like you. Yeah. yeah, I'm feeling is mutual. <laughs> feeling is mutual. We have a lot of fun at the depot putting art together. Uh, and you are an artist, but you do other things. Like you said, your job that keeps the lights on, you do different things. Tell I everybody do. what it is you do in your day job. 
Yeah, my day job, I'm I'm the general counsel and chief of staff for the Oklahoma Department of Labor. That's so a I, big it's, job. It's a big title. I get to, you know, I like my job a lot. I really do. I've, um, I've been with the state for 25 years now. Majority wow. of it's been the labor department. I was at the corporation commission for a while. And what's nice about the labor department is that we work on a scale that I get to deal with individuals i mean we do we do a number of things but but we do wage and hour claims benefit concerns we regulate the amusement industry asbestos abatement it, it's never dull and then oh, yeah. we get to work with the legislature and they're in session right now so we're keeping busy right now i'll bet you are there are a, a lot of bit. things going on this session is a it's an interesting one yeah uh, they're always interesting i'll bet um, well, I'm so glad that you are also on the side, one of the wonderful weirdos that helps put things together. And I'm really excited about this show that we've put together for March and April that we are calling Lighthearted. Uh, and you're a part of that show. I am um, excited to be part of that. So. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to tell folks or I'm happy to tell folks kind of how that all happened. Well, how about you tell folks and I'll jump in. That sounds just fine. You know, I, for those of you that don't know, you know, at the depot, we are a gallery and we have had a featured show every two months. And usually we're careful about the art that we choose because we are also a, an events venue. We are one of the best venues in town to host a wedding or a gathering or a thing in the days when we can do that. Hopefully we'll get back to those soon, but we're not there now. Right. Uh, and we don't have any um, rentals in the depot for the next couple of months. So we thought, hey, if we can do stuff that's a little outside the box and we don't have to worry about being the background for somebody's wedding, let's do some weird, wonderful, whimsical things. And that's how Lighthearted was born. That is how it came together. And yeah. it was it was fun having that discussion because as soon as it, you know, you were there. But as soon as the idea was put out, immediately people started going, I know a weirdo that would fit perfectly. Yes. And I, I would like to tell you I was offended when my name came up, but I wasn't. I was pleased. I'm like, yes, I'm perfectly odd. I'll fit in this show just fine. Thanks. Yeah, I love it. I cannot wait for people to have a chance to see the art of all of the folks we've put together because it is going to be entertaining and full of giggles and definitely lighthearted. And I'm I'm happy that we get to play a little bit of a role in that. I think we could all use a laugh right about now. Well, and 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 you know this, Sherry, because you've seen some of the the art that's coming to the show, and I know yeah. you know all of the artists. It's fun and it's wacky and it's whimsical. We haven't taken a step down from the the quality of the shows we put on. These are some very talented artists. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about the other ones. There's some very <laughs> talented people in this show. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's one of the most exciting things. I think, you know, when we... When we think of fine art, sometimes we can let ourselves get a little mentally boxed in to highly skilled work and more traditional subject matter or traditional formats. And the works that are being put forward for this show are all very highly skilled work with highly skilled artists. They're just really different presentations and fun and challenging subject matter. And I love all of that. They are. They're. I mean, they're. They're right there, walking that line of, of pop art and some contemporary art, and it's yes. just delightful stuff. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, so let's talk about you a little bit as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so you've worked for the Labor Commission for twenty five years. That's a that's a chunk of life right there. And when did when did art become a part of the thing that you do? You know. I, I think I have the story like a lot of artists do. It's just, it feels like it's always been a part of me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a very distinct memory of, I couldn't tell you how old I was, but I was little. Um, mm -hmm. And I was trying desperately to draw Foghorn Leghorn. I, I, I couldn't tell you why Foghorn Leghorn, except I was like all the other kids, everybody loved Looney Tunes. Uh -huh. And I, I can recall getting frustrated um, 
because it wasn't coming out like I would wanted. And so, you know, we just, we just stay at it. And, and, um, it's just been part of who I am. Like a lot of artists, it's through grade school. Um, you know, star Wars came out and I've shared this story before with the depot. Um, I figured out a way that I could make a quarter here or there because my buddies wanted me to draw them a, r2d2 or darth vader or whatever and then it didn't change much in high school except i went from drawing r2d2 to you know i drew tattoos on guys arms and gals arms and nice stuff that you know my mom would have been disappointed to know i drew but i wasn't <laughs> with my mom so it was okay <laughs> so you've kind of been a working and selling artist since you were a kid for a little bit yeah for a hot second <laughs> And then I uh, the, the, when I when I really got into the commercial art was I did my undergrad at Oklahoma State mm -hmm. and and then I bounced it out because I came to law school here in Norman. Um, but at Oklahoma State, there was a, a it was called Slow Bird, S-L-O hyphen bird. Yep. And it was a graphic studio there. Um, Mike Stavis was the owner and they did all of Eskimo Joe's t-shirts and anniversary shirts and anniversary and, and advertisement. They had a lot of other clients as well. And yeah. they had posted, they were looking for an artist. Um, I was not an art major. I was a political science major, mm -hmm. um, but I applied and uh, they gave me a run around for a while because I was a poli sci major, um, but it worked out and I got the job and it just had a blast. I mean, if, if I could figure out a way now to keep the lights on by doing art, I, would probably do it because it never felt like I was actually working. Uh, I love when, that. So, yeah, and so since well, then, it's just it's it's something I do. It's cheaper than therapy, and it has the same benefits for me. It like lets me leave yeah. the stress of the office at the office and then do something I enjoy. I love it. Well, and you've experienced a little bit of success with it. I mean, besides having shows at places like Michelangelo's and being a part of the um, We Art Lindsay Street project, you are now uh, represented by the Pop Gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Is that right? I am. As of, as of November of last year, I am, which was just a, a blast. I was tickled that that worked out that way. That's pretty amazing. That's a that's a great gallery, and, and it's a yeah, it's a it's a fun little gallery there. It's a little different from most of the others, um, mm -hmm. but you know, I mean, as the name suggests, it's pop and contemporary art, and there's a fantastic work there, and and they actually carry some other Oklahoma artists there as well. Nice, nice, and you among them. That's awesome. Um, I know that we've got some images of the work of some of the works that you've done. So I would love to like, let those run in the background while we continue to talk. These first few pieces, these are smaller works. I see them in your hand. So tell me about the small pieces. So yeah, I'm a, there's a, it's called Artimat. It's artists in cellophane is actually the, the name of the, the business, but they do Artimats and what they are is they they're old cigarette machines that have been refurbished in order to vend art. And yeah. so all of these pieces that you're seeing right now are, are the size of an old cigarette pack roughly so that the, yeah. the machine can continue to work like it should. And these are, like you said, they're, they're about two and a half inches. Um, and all those, a, a big part of those represented different movies because the North Carolina is where they are out of, they have a movie festival. So nice. Now these other pieces, these were part of the um, the Lindsay Street Safari, and so mm -hmm. I took those when I cut them down in those individual things. And these, this piece there, the dragon, the the snow cone before the uh, ice cream cone before them, those are large pieces. Those are probably they're at least four foot. Um, just fun stuff. This is different stuff. This is pastel. These were done wow. from a series of. Um, photographs of a trip to Ghana. So these were Ghanaian persons that had interesting faces and beautiful colors. And yeah, and I like to play with pastel, though it's been a hot second. I had no idea you worked in pastels. That's a great. A little bit. That's my Madonna and child. I love it. <laughs> and what's this one? That's an oil painting. 
Um, and that's after, uh, oh, I forget who it is right now. It's not an original piece, but that, that silly thing, that's another one of my uh, pieces from the safari. That's also from the safari. And so those sat in my garage for a few years, and I realized it didn't make any sense to not do something with them. This is surfing a nanner. That's what I call it. <laughs> I love them. That actually hangs in my office, which is fun to have people come in. They don't expect it. That's sushi. Mm -hmm. And then I had a, a series of uh, tree frogs. There were a bunch of them that were part of the safari um, oh. four by four panel. And I cut those loose into individual pieces and epoxied them. And uh, those did well. I had those at Michelangelo's and they were gone in a, in a heartbeat. So you have any left? I don't. You don't. They're so great. Well, uh, I you. really do love those frogs. And now I do. I love the pieces that you did. I love the robot series that you did. And I love the work that you're doing for this show. Uh, and I love seeing them get uh, all resined up and really pop. Uh, and I think, do you have handy one of your monkeys? Can you grab it? I forgot to ask you. I do. Hold on. I'm holding, I'm holding, because I want to see it. He is, I, I have to give a sneak peek because it's on the postcard for this show, for us to be able to show. Don has been doing a series of vintage toys, and among those are, uh, if anybody remembers them, the Barrel of Monkeys. I used to have one. Look at them. So really cool. Um, so look, look, they work. And and so I'm really hoping. So no, go front ahead. Side, front yeah. side has got the epoxy on there. Right. And then the back side is not epoxy. There's a there's a hanger on there, and I'm going to disguise that better. Um, so these can be hung on the wall. Yes. Um, or you can hang them from your ceiling or whatever and, and hook them together like the game used to be. So. Oh, I love that. I'm really hoping to work inside the depot to find a way to hang them arm in arm for everybody to be able to see that way, because I think it would be spectacular. It's been, it's been fun making them. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I guess maybe it's just nostalgic because I like mm -hmm. the, the antique robot wind up robots, mm -hmm. the barrel monkeys, um, you know, I, there's others I want to do. I'd love to do the Rock'em Sock'em robots. I'd love to do the yes. Operation Game. Yes. I'd love to do, what was it? What was there, there was one Ants in the Pants or something. That, I remember Ants in the Pants. All those fun games. Because I found there's, a, there's an immediate connection with most people. Yeah. People my age or older know them. Young people. But my kids, my kids had barrel monkeys, so they know yeah. them. So. I love that. I And I, I love that you are, because you are a highly skilled artist, that you're turning and taking those skills and turning them to something so fun and accessible and whimsical uh, that it just makes me happy and brings me joy. Um, I think that's all I've got today, unless there's anything else you would like to talk to people about, Don. Well, no, I would just hope that they would find some time to come see the show because we're going to have... <laughs> Can I tease some of the stuff? Please go right ahead. We're going to have monkeys. Yes. We're going to have wieners. Yes. And we're going to have, what else? We're going to have masks. Masks. And we're going to have, have lizards. Lizards. And, yeah. We're going to have. And cartoons and strange mashup art. Uh, yeah. So much fun stuff. So Absolutely. much fun stuff. And it would. It would look beautiful on sitting on somebody's counter or their mantle or hung on the wall right next yep. to whatever else there is. This is this is fine art. Yeah. Done fun. So. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Don. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your service to the depot. We appreciate you so much. And I hope you all get a chance to come by and see the art of light hearted at the depot running through April 30th. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Jerry. Bye. All right, you guys, stick around. We'll be back with more Depot TV. Hi, guys. It's me, Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. 
we have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. Guthrie song uh, I first heard actually by Roger Tillerson on an album he put out in 1971. The late great Roger Tillerson, a fellow Okie, is called Old Crack Looking Glass. <laughs> saw her dance past. She caught my eye, she smiled and looked away. Now did you ever stop and count or add up the amount of stranded guys hitchhiked through the glass? Well, I wish I had a dollar bill for every paycheck that you kill. In that room behind your old crack looking glass She did shake and she did shimmy She snapped her fingers loud She brushed her hair against me As she danced the sawdust floor She did wiggle, she did jiggle Till the breaking of the dawn and I watched her in that old crack looking glass. Not a soul knew me in town, just a tramp and I would bound. I did hate her hot hand touching mine. Then she touched me on the neck, said, Hey, partner, won't you buy the drinks? Her hand felt cold as the icy air outside. Well, she did shake and she did shimmy. She snapped her fingers loud. Brushed her hair against me as she danced the sawdust floor. Well, she did a wiggle, she did jiggle till the breaking of the dawn. Then I watched her in that old crack of the game glass. Then the thought came to my mind about a gal I'd left behind. Almost three thousand miles away. So 
right through that drinking glass, right through that old cracked looking glass. And I did not stop till she was by my side. Well, she did shake and she did shimmy. She snapped her fingers loud. She brushed her hair against me as she danced the sawdust floor. She did wiggle, she did jiggle till the breaking of the dawn. And I watched her in that old crack looking glass. Yes, I watched her in that old crack looking glass. Yeah, I watched her in that old crack looking glass. When I was growing up in uh, Woodward, Oklahoma, uh, there was a guy who worked at the radio station there. His name was Lyle Gaston. He was a great musician uh, and also a really good songwriter and uh, had songs done by Hank Thompson. And also this one I'm going to do of his that Eddie Cochran recorded called Stockings and Shoes. <laughs> Stockings and shoes to rock all night. I love my baby, indeed I do. I love her, my baby, she loves me too. Well, you ought to see us rock without stockings and shoes. Stockings and shoes, stockings and shoes. And shoes to dance a boot. Well, the bare feet slapping on the hardwood floor. These crazy things happen along about four. Yeah, the very next time my baby's back for more. Stockings and shoes. Stockings and shoes. Yeah, you don't need stockings and shoes to dance a I guess you have weathered 2020 and the first two months of 2021 in more ways than one. Um, in this 14 month period, we have seen people behave really badly. Um, and we have also undergone some very serious weather events. Um, and I think that should remind us that despite our best efforts or maybe even because of them, um, it's going to be nature that gets us ultimately. At the same time, it's nature that I really have hope in. And um, one of the good things that happened in 2020 is that I published um, my seventh collection of poetry, The Road to the River. And it is very much about my own experience in nature and response to nature. 
and I thought I would read for you the title poem. Um, some of you who live in Norman may recognize this place, but unless you're um, a birder or someone who's really paying close attention, you may never have realized how special it was. The Road to the River. The road to the river runs a rural mile south of the city beyond the animal shelter, the town dump, the police firing range. This dead end teems with life. Deer stroll out of the woods and turn to stare as I amble toward them. Then they vault over a barbed wire fence, scramble through a field of ragweed and disappear into the woods. A bobcat slinks behind my car while coyotes gamble across a pasture. Certain vistas remind me of paintings by Bruegel or Millet, depending on the light and time of year. Angels emerge from cumulus clouds above the road, or bales of hay are strewn like loaves of bread across a field. But it's mostly the birds that lure me here the bright buntings of summer that make way for sooty juncos, the yellow-throated warbler of June, the yellow-rumped warbler of September. In summer, I scurry between spots of shade. In winter, I linger in sunlit stretches, binoculars raised to scan the sky, the tops of trees and underbrush, hoping for a glimpse of a rare bird, a summer tanager popping out of the woods, a spotted towhee wheezing in the tall grass, the belted kingfisher rattling by the reedy pond. Halfway down the road, pavement gives way to gravel, then sand and the bank of the river. In winter, bald eagles build eyries in the oaks on the far shore and sail along the water hunting for fish. In summer, great and snowy egrets wait for the fish to find them where they stand in the shallows. Then, quick, they've snatched a perch. Every walk by woods and fields and stream leading to the river is different from every other. Some mornings wear shrouds of fog, others jewels of frost. Some days, cows browse in tender grass. On others, horses graze the ground. In every season, the buttery song of meadowlarks rolls across the hayed fields, and bluebirds fly from fence wire to cottonwoods as I draw near to the end of the road to the river. A friend told me that was the best poem he ever read about the South Canadian River, and, of course, I thanked him for the compliment, but then I pointed out it was probably the only poem he's ever read about the South Canadian River. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for this week's Depot TV. We'll see you next week with Brian Horton of Horton Records out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. We'll get to know our neighbor, Sandy Knudsen of Oklahoma Youth Sings, and we'll learn about the art of Leon Richmond, also a part of the lighthearted show at the Depot running through May 1st. Uh, let's see, before I go, though, there are so many people to thank that make all of this happen. And let's see if I can thank them real fast. I mean, real fast. Ready? Thank you to the Oklahoma Arts Council, Norman Arts Council, Kirkpatrick Foundation, Norman Parks and Recreation, Armstrong Bank, Tom McAuliffe and Don Size Real Estate, Sky Deers and Gingerbread Nursery School, Norman Smile Center, Peggy Doviak and DM Wealth Management, Monford and Two Green Chicks, Spivey Media and Kyle Reed Music. And folks like you who could become a member of the Depot for as little as $5 a month and support us at Depot TV or Summer Breeze or our gallery work or hopefully soon some more events outside. Uh, that's all. You guys have a good week. Bye. <laughs>